Good afternoon, everyone. I thank all of you for being here today. Today is um, June 1st, 2021. It's approximately 6.03. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order tonight. Uh, we're here for our budget uh, workshop. We're going to ask, tonight we're going to open up, we're going to ask Commissioner um, Edwards, if you would lead us in prayer. We're going to ask Commissioner Sanders, if you would lead us in our prayer, please. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father above, we thank you for another day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together and do the business of the county. We ask this time that you would give us strength, wisdom, and discernment. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, our county manager, Mr. Lloyd Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to take just a minute before we begin to uh, thank all of the department heads and all of the elected officials who have taken part in putting together this, uh, this uh, proposed budget for FY22. And I'd particularly like to thank Brittany and her staff, um, uh, and in particular Brittany, who has done so much work on this uh, budget uh, for this year and in putting together, um, uh, utilizing some new software uh, that we have uh, purchased and in putting together uh, this presentation, which is um, very easy to look at and also is very user friendly. This is an interactive, comes from an interactive software that we have uh, in our, uh, on our website, and um, I think it'll make it a lot easier for the, the public uh, to see. But um, thanks to all who have worked so very hard on this and um, in making this a, a budget uh, that I think is, is a very workable budget. Um, in general, our uh, proposed budget for fiscal year 2022 for the general fund is $78,128,142, and <clears throat> which is a 2.5% increase over FY21. And the total budget, which includes general fund and all of our other sources of revenue and all of the other funds, is $119,000,000. $773,961, which is only a 1.6% increase over the total budget for FY 2021. And with that, I would like to turn it over uh, to uh, Brittany White, our finance director, to go through this budget summary with you. Thank you, sir. Are y'all screens working pretty? Can y'all see? No? Okay. That's what I was worried about. Okay. So the plan is to go over the digital budget book off the website. So it's on that screen up there. But I also took um, the all funds summaries and then the general fund detail and printed them out just in case your screens didn't work. Um, so those are the two main parts of the budget we're going to hit on tonight. So if you have questions about what page number, I can try to look on this page, um, on the printed book, and then we'll try to work through all of it there. Yeah, so the whole book is right around 1,200 pages. That includes this introduction, the history of the county, the fund structure, so um, as a user, if you take the time to go over the introduction section, that's really going to explain a lot about the way governmental finance works, the way budgeting works, the way our fund structure works. So I really encourage everyone to take some time and read through that because that's really going to help you to understand the way this budget is built. So one thing I wanted to point out here was the fund structure. So this explains the types of governmental funds, but then we also have this chart down here 
that is specific to Newton County. So you'll see we have governmental funds, proprietary funds, and judiciary funds. So in those, you have um, in the governmental funds, that's where pretty much everything we do with the exception of the enterprise funds are held. So that's our general fund, our special revenue funds, our debt service fund, and our capital fund. Proprietary funds, we have in enterprise funds, which are water, solid waste, and gaithers. And then we have one internal service fund, which is the workers' compensation. The agency funds are there in a different color because down here in this legend that explains it to you, these are generally just funds that money comes in, money goes out. So there's really no need to budget for those funds. So that, um, and the, up top there's an explanation of that. So I just wanted to point out this introduction section because I think there's a lot of good information in there. We'll start with our personnel changes. <clears throat> so these are the, pers the proposed personnel changes for FY22. Some of these are additional positions, some of them are reevaluations in this action column, it explains. So we have one position for the BOC for a grant writer. We have one position for the tax commissioner, that's a tax assistant. We have one position for information services, which is a microsystem specialist. We have one position for elections, which is an administrative technician. The four positions you see here for senior services are all reevaluations. So these are just going from part-time positions to full-time positions. The magistrate court is also a reevaluation of the part-time magistrate judge. The GIS are two interns. The public works, there's one, two, three, six equipment operators, and those um, are to assist for the trash pickup. The two district attorney positions are also reevaluations, so those are not new positions. Um, the fire services, there is 16 new positions to help fund or to staff Station 4, and these would not be hired on until the 1st of January 2022. And then there's four positions. Oh, can we get yes, there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Brittany. <clears throat> I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, you said those are still for Station 4, but what about 8? Eight, eight is supposed to be done in four, right? Right, and most of the personnel that we need for eight have already uh, been hired. They're in training. Um, some of them are still going through some of their training, um, but I think we've got most of the people there that we need for eight. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So the salary that you're seeing there under fire services, that's for a half of a year's salary. And then de development services, four positions there, a code enforcement officer, development inspector, a zip one, and a planning tech. So that total comes out to 1.3 um, for contingency positions. So these, um, the money for these positions is not directly put into the department budget. It is transferred into the department once the changes are made. Okay, so now Lloyd. I didn't know if we were taking questions in between. I didn't want to stop you in the midst. I noticed that for the um, BOC position in the preliminary budget, you proposed two positions. And I'm seeing one now that is on there. So is that the position that's already been hired? The P, I don't know what the acronym stands for, the PIO? That contingency spreadsheet, are you looking at the one for 2021 or 2022? No, when we had the preliminary budget, if you, um, if you go back to some of the videos in the workshop, there was two positions that was being proposed. It was the grant writer and the PIO. But I know we just recently hired the PIO. So what fund did that come out of if it was in the budget? The PIO position um, has already been hired. and Actually, it was budgeted for FY21. Okay. And I think what happened there was we were discussing the PIO, the um, uh, that PIO position at the same time we were discussing this, but it was actually funded in this FY21 budget, and that's um, 
uh, James T uh, Tucker, who is running the uh, board up there for us. Hi, James. T they're asking what PIO means. I was oh, asking the I'm sorry, Public Information okay. Officer. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Commissioner Henderson. Well, who, who, who have been acting as the uh, Public Information Officer? Or is it the same person? Okay, so we just somewhat, I guess, promoted or changed the title of what? Lord, you want you want to make clarifications on Brian and Mr. Tucker? Uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Did you Mr. want to Chairman? make some clarifications on Mr. Tucker's yes. uh, position? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, what um, James will be doing is assisting Brian. The title. Primar the title. Oh, the, yeah. And that's, I'm getting okay. to that. And that's Brian is the head of the PIO department, if you will. Um, James is specifically working on video. We'll be working with video productions and also assisting Brian with any of the, uh, with things like press releases and, as well. But he has a, a extensive background in uh, video production work. Um, and so he's bringing that to the table and that's part of what we really need to dress up our um, uh, presence on social media, YouTube, and on Facebook, and, and those other places. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Lloyd briefly touched on the all funds, but we'll just dive back into that here on the big screen. So the overall total budget encompasses all the funds of the county. So all the funds of the county, the budget is $119.7 million, which is, um, oh, this is page four of your, your hard copy book. So last year, the budget for all funds was $117.3 million. So that is an increase of right around $2 million. So this shows the county revenue by fund. So general fund encompasses 65% of the whole county budget. The next largest budget would be the 2017 SPLOS this year that could change depending on where we're at in the SPLOS what we're kind of getting we're gearing up to be in the position of this SPLOS to where we've collected a lot of funds and we're able to start utilizing those. The next largest fund in the county is the water fund. Then you come into the solid waste fund at 5.8 percent and the E911 fund is at 2 percent. And then all the other funds are pretty small, so that includes the fire, well, the fire district's 2.3, but then after that you've got capital improvements in 1.7, our grant fund at 1.4, and then all the other funds are under 1% of the county budget. And these graphs are, inter I don't know if y'all can see these on your screen, but these graphs are interactive, so when you click on them, it, it shows you percentages and numbers, because I'll scroll up here. You can see numbers when you click on these graphs. So they're, they're pretty interactive. The budget book also has spreadsheet breakdowns. So depending on what view you like to look at, they're both going to be the same information. Just depends on um, personal preference here. So as Lloyd mentioned earlier, the general fund total budget is $78.1 million, which is a 2.5% increase from last year. Our LVAP which is a special revenue fund, is 60000 is the proposed budget for that. The juvenile supplemental services budget, the proposed budget for that is 6045 The total for the sheriff's forfeited funds are $15,010. The total for law library is $2,000. The total for the sheriff's special revenue fund is 5000 the total for the gel fund is 215000 The total for the date fund is 90150 The real estate grant clerk fund is 10000 
the district crime victims, this one's based off um, grant revenues. And so we budgeted zero this year because we don't intend, we're not intending for any right now. The E911 fund is 3.1 million. The NSP fund is 3,050. Our total multiple grants, so pretty much all the grants that come through the county flow through the multiple grant fund. So the budget for that this year is 1.6 million. Our fire district fund, which is the special fire district tax that is on the tax bills, that is 2.6 million this year. Our capital improvement fund, the budget for that is um, 2 million this year. The FEMA, we really don't budget for FEMA because we, we don't really budget for national um, natural disasters. So we just do budget amendments as needed for that fund. So that's zero right now. We budgeted 12 million for the SPLOS 2017. Um, nothing for the 2011 SPLOS since it's fully collected. The impact fee funds, one million. Our debt, total debt service fund is fifteen thousand eight six forty five. Our total for solid waste this year is six point eight. The, the water fund is ten million, and the total for Gaithers this year, which includes Gaithers and Factory Shoals, so that totals for both is two ninety one. So that brings you to the one nineteen million. So one, another thing I'll point out here is under the fund summaries, if you go to these individually, so we'll just click on the LVAP, there is a fund summary at the beginning, and that that goes over exactly what the fund is, where the funding comes from. So a lot of these are funded by um, OCGAs through this, that are the state um, mandates the way that we can spend those funds. So if that is the case, it'll explain it here. And then each of these have a more in-depth budget if you dive into them. Um, those are not in your books because, like I said, I was trying to minimize the number of pages because I know y'all don't want to look at 1,200 pages tonight. Um, but you can dive into all that here on this digital book. Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> um, Brittany, you were talking about the uh, total capital improvement fund the two million uh, for FY 2022. Have we by any chance identified any projects thus far that that two million would be going towards? So tonight on the regular BOC meeting there's an agenda item for a, cap a transfer so most of those projects there are going to be in that budget transfer that's going to be on the seven o'clock meeting. So if you've seen the back up to that that two million comes from that total. So what we what we're going to see, well, I mean, I've already seen it, but what we're going to see at seven o'clock, that's going to equate to the two million. Yes, the budget transfer that you'll see at seven tonight is around two point six, but I just budgeted two million because I didn't intend for all the projects to probably happen within a year, so I estimated two million, and then some of that will obviously carry forward if it doesn't, if it's not completed within the next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Henry. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. C. Um, you were saying that the uh, budget for, uh, for Gators and Factory Show was put, put together. I mean, all these funds, all those funds kind of bundled, bundled together. And if, if, if my memory serves me right, I think we had talked so much about um, Gators and having a uh, funded budget from the county. Uh, for the general fund about two hundred thousand dollars. So how much is the show being funded? And uh, I, I'm guess I'm asking because I don't know uh, what are we funding uh, factory shows for? Do we still have a person down there, or is somebody patrolling it, or, or is it exactly what? It so up here on the screen, I have the fund detail for the Gaithers and Factory Show Fund. It's probably, this is not, the detail for this is not in the book I printed for you tonight, but mm -hmm. up here on the screen. Let me scroll down. So the, in the revenue section is where you're going to see the transfer in from the general fund. So that, um, 
Let me actually go down to the detail down here. Okay. So under the factory shoals department, the operating transfer in from the general fund is $100,000. That's factory shoals. Then we will scroll down here to Gaithers, and the operating transfer in from the general fund is 141334 so that um, between the two of those, you're looking at two around 240. Okay. <clears throat> and thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess maybe to law, what are we spending uh, money over at the show? For what? I know, <clears throat> excuse me, there are some um, people who kind of still in, I guess, in, I won't say tents, but in, uh, you know, still there. So what, what, what are we dedicating funds kind of for, for over there for? Better shows. Yeah, we have to do regular maintenance maintenance over there. We do have the campground um, that has to be regularly maintained. Uh, there's a boardwalk that goes uh, down next to the river and a little ways uh, up into the hillsides, and that has to be maintained. Um, there is a, a house there too that we have to do some maintenance on the parking lot, the trash pick up and that kind of thing um, also trash pick up in the long the, the river um, and that sort of thing we do have an employee there who takes care of all of that mm -hmm. um, and that's the biggest part of the expense is that employees salary and benefits so if you if you'll be so kind to tell me how much are we paying the employee and are we getting any money from the people who are it, though at the tent site um, we're paying the employee 40 it looks like total um, there is uh, let me see, we're paying in 44,000 in salary um, and it looks like I might have to do some quick math in my head uh, 2268. Looks like the total is round, round about, about 70, 70,000 or so, 71,000 total um, salary and benefit. Right. Um, and, and then. Um, so. I'm sorry, Commissioner, what was the other question you had? What are all the fees from the campsite? Right. Um, we do collect fees. Um, there, I think we charge fifteen dollars a night. Um, do we have? Did you? Those are the. Do you have a fee? Okay, the activity fee there is looks like we budgeted five thousand. Um, the last couple of years, it looks like they've collected a little over three thousand. Three thousand thirty nine hundred dollars in looks like two thousand nineteen uh, FY nineteen and then FY twenty it was thirty one hundred um, and in FY twenty one we haven't obviously we haven't finished the year out um, FY twenty is I would think would be lower right. than that because of all of the COVID <coughs> right. uh, so, so activity that's been going on so, so how, how many people is is it the campsite? And I, I'm sorry, I, th I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, no problem. Um, I believe that we have either eight or ten campsites, and it's primitive camping. It's tent campsites. There is a um, uh, a restroom there, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there is a shower there, uh, but it's all primitive camping. There's no hookups for electricity or any of that thing. Like right. if someone wanted to bring a a camper down there they wouldn't be able to do that it's all tent type right. camping so our so our man who oversees if you want to do to make the uh i mean as the for whatever you said he's the one to go out and say well you you've been here uh and collect some money and then take the money and return and give it to the somebody at the county does that work right they collect he does collect the money and then it comes into um, the finance office and finance deposits that takes care of the receipts mm. and okay. uh, the, you know, takes care of the accounting. So I'm, I'm glad we had it in place because the two times I've been over there, it was at will. In other words, you could put something in the little thing you want to 
You just didn't get in, you didn't necessarily have to. Right. Oh, it's just that. Um, do we know who's all at the campsite? In other words, you know, typically, you know, could be all kinds of people at the campsite, and we know we had a couple of drownings. I think I know we had two drownings this year. Yeah. And um, so, who so the gym he oversees? So oh, he sees people going too close to the or in danger of like swimming in the summertime. Typically in the summertime. They go down there and people get hot from town or wherever. They go down and take a dump, I mean take a swim and, and jump in one of the um you know, group I guess the river and get drowned it. So uh, do we have anybody warning people? I have seen a few signs. And so you know, it's 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 their concern that concerns me and also I think we need to somehow know know maybe who are camping at those sites, but at uh five five or ten or fifteen dollars a day. We, we do have some signage up. There is no, there are no lifeguards, but we do have some signage up advi advising people that they're to swim at their own risk. Um, that is a, I mean, it's a, it's a river. It's a wild river. There are um, trees and whatnot that right. float down the river, and people can yeah. get caught in there. So, um, you're right. you know, people do yeah. have to take some responsibility you're because right. we can't provide. You're, you're right. Uh, you, and yeah. you, you're absolutely right. And I think until we figure out have a plan of some kind of oversight of telling people, I don't like going to people's funerals. And you said we had a sign and we told them. I think we should take more of a of of trying to of preventative measures rather than just you know just saying we got a sign there and you you got killed. And I know we forget the families on TV when they're saying the two families. It was a family of a young man and a young boy who got killed. And there was another family. So, you know, they need to close down because we just, it's not enough, uh, some sort of protection that we think that the county should be giving, you know, allowing people to go down there. That was all. Well, we, um, we do also lock the parking lot up um, with the times when we're not there. Um, there's a gate across there. I mean, unfortunately, people still. Go across around through the gate, but um, but we do try to secure that uh, as best we can. But it's pretty open down through there. One last thing, she brought it up. I got one more, one more question. What can we do as a county since we uh, since we we are funded to a certain extent to put in place to try to prevent some of those people uh, from going in and swimming? In most cases, drowned. I think it's been about every year that somebody goes down to get drowned. I mean, I, I know probably the only thing that would convince people not to go in there when they're not supposed to would be if they were arrested for trespass. Um, but that's a kind of a difficult thing to do. I don't know that we would really want to do. I'd rather go to jail and give somebody put a body bag over and take them to the morgue. So now, um, before we dig into the general fund, I do want to just show this part of the book. This shows all of the funding sources. So I think this is a really good tool as well because you can dig into the county revenue sources based off the um, classification. So you can go to taxes, license and permits, intergovernmental revenues, charges for services, fines and forfeitures, investment income, um, contributions and donations, miscellaneous reven revenue, and other financing sources. So I think this is, um, this is a good tool for people to really dig in and see where the sources of revenue are for the county. So I just wanted to briefly hit on that before we really dig into the general fund. So as mentioned before, the, the budget for the general fund this year is $78.1 million, which is a 2.5% increase over the prior year budget. So this breakdown shows our revenue sources. 
So the revenue sources for the general fund come in at 86.1%, which is taxes. And then 5.9% is charges for services. 2.4% is other financing sources. 2.1% is intergovernmental revenue. 1.7% is license and permits. 1% is fine and forfeitures. And 0.8% is miscellaneous revenues. So the breakdown for that can be found here. So all of the taxes are lumped into a taxing column. And so you can see that comes out to um, 67.2 million for all the taxes. And then the license and permits comes out to 1.3. Intergovernmental revenues, this is where a lot of the um, grants come in, so there's a lot of projects tied there. 1.6 million. Charges for services, which is your court fees, your um, special, sheriff special services fees, your inmate medical, prisoner, animal shelter fees, things like that come in here. And those, that comes out to 4.5 million. Fines and forfeitures are just what that says, fines and forfeitures per the court system. So the total for that is 750,500. The investment income, um, we did drop that pretty significantly this year because interest rates are so low. So that dropped to 50,000 this year. Contributions and donations, that was budgeted at 36.3 or 36,300. And the miscellaneous revenues, which are pretty much all the rest of the revenues that don't fit into any of the other categories, is 629,340. And then our other financing sources, which are generally sell of assets and transfers in from other funds, which the only transfer in from other funds that we do do in the general fund is the transfer in from the, the um, 271, which is the fire district tax. So the transfer in from there is 1864000 Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Where Where is the, uh, the Stanton Springs, the last sale? Where is that? Where are those funds located? In this? Are you talking about the 2.6? That actually, um, since we've already received that, that's in the 2021 budget. Okay, we'll um, dive into the expenditures now. So as you can see, most of the expenditures by function, which in the chart of accounts you have functions, so you, you lump all public safety together, general government together, judicial together, and so forth. So the largest expenditure in the general fund budget is public safety at 52%. Then your next is your general government budget, which is departments like your BOC, your finance, your IT department, GIS. This is page 44 of your budget book, by the way, if you're looking for this. And your judicial is your court system, so they're all lumped together. They're 9.7% of the budget. Your public works is 7.3%. Other financing uses, which is um, any transfers out to other funds we do or appropriations, they're all lumped into this category, and that's 5.4%. Cultural and recreation is 3.2%. Housing and development is 1.8%. Debt service is 1.3%. And health and welfare is 1.2%. So if you come further down to this chart of accounts, you can see what falls under general government. So general government is these departments. So this is also going to be our breakdown for all the departments for the FY 2022 budget. So we will spend some time going over this 
And this is on page 45 of your book. So the um, non-departmental is where we budget things such as our contingency is budgeted there. Our um, other employee bonuses are also budgeted there. So that's generally where, um, that's generally what's budgeted in that department. So our contingency for fiscal year changes and our contingency for the proposed personnel changes that we discussed at the beginning. So those are going to be what makes up your non-departmental. The BOC budget is at $2,099,365 this year. The elections budget, I'm going to have to look over here so I'm going to move my microphone because I cannot read that. I need to read here. 703-572. The financial administration is 957 747. The data processing, which is the IT department, 952-579. GIS is 375-488. Human resources is 648-33. The tax commissioner is $1,249,082. The tax assessor's office is $1,050,207. Board of Equalization is 59,689. Risk Management is 1,820,000. And Government Buildings and Facilities is 1,316,859. So those departments make up your general government departments. Scrolling down to the judicial category, we've got our Superior Court budget at $1,104,430. Our clerk of courts budget, which is $1,544,117. The district attorney budget is $2,1,637. The magistrate court budget is $419,038. The probate court budget is $739,231. And the juvenile court budget is one million one hundred thirty eight thousand two hundred and thirty two and public defender is five hundred and ninety nine five thirty seven the next category is public safety so here in public safety you'll find the sheriff's office and the sheriff oversees the sheriff's office budget the east side pre precinct budget the west side precinct budget the jail operations and the student resource officers so the sheriff's budget this year is $15,543,897. The West Side Precinct budget is $154,736. The East Side Precinct budget is $23,918. The Jail Operations budget is $12,838,812. And the Student Resource Officer budget is $1,374,195. So the county fire services oversees two budgets. So you have your general county fire service and you have your fire training budget as well. So the county fire service budget is 9743540 and the fire training budget is 117714 The next um, department that falls under public safety is the coroner and that budget this year is 114. 379 and then animal services 910755 in your EMA which is 394049 so that makes up the public safety um commissioner Elk. thank you mr chairman so Brittany, refresh my memory on the school resource officer that's reimbursed by the board of education correct yes so um not quite 100 percent close but not um and i have not heard an updated number if that number generally the number changes the revenue um because there's a contract and i haven't heard of the new contract amount for next year thank you mr uh, commissioner Sandler. my concern is what did we change from the preliminary budget that's what i'm interested in and i, I loved it this is great thank you so much for this vote layout but what was changed was there any changes or was it the exact same preliminary as the preliminary budget 
overall the preliminary budget at the first budget workshop was around it wasn't quite 80 million it was 79 i think it was 79.8 or 79.6 this new budget is 78.1 so we did do a reduction a big chunk of that is capital so we had budgeted 2.6 in the capital improvement transfer in the general fund so tonight the budget amendment that will be coming to the board is to try is to, um, for us to try to do those transfers in 21 instead of 22, which helped us to be able to reduce our expenditures. Therefore, we were able to reduce our revenues. And that is made possible by the $2.6 million check that we received from the JDA. Okay. Now, do you have a list of, in reference to the non-departmental uh, departments, were there any changes made to them or would it stay the same? Because I know this actually outlines the amount but it doesn't break down the specifics of what is included in that amount. So I think that would be a lot more interesting to the public and be, to be more detailed so they know exactly what's included in $900,000. So if you dive into the department, which I didn't dive into department by department since we only have an hour, I didn't think there was going to be enough time to do that. Um, but the department budget detail can be found under each department. So this is non-departmental. So you can see the spreadsheet. That's line by line details right here for everything in every department. Uh, Commissioner Henderson. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. C. Um, question I, that I have, and in, in, uh, we were talking about, uh, you talked, you touched a little bit on uh, about the. Um, uh, school resource officer, and you and you said that um, most of it, all of it, I guess, I guess I thought I said ninety-eight percent of the money, or ninety-seven or ninety-five percent of the money, is paid for by the school. <clears throat> so do we put money up to count? Do, does we budget money for them, and then they reimburse it back to us? And if they reimburse it back to us, where does it go? Where does that money go? So in the student resource officer budget, there's a revenue that's a intergovernmental revenue from the school board. Mm -hmm. So it goes back directly to that department. Generally, we try to keep that about the same where the contract amount is the budgeted amount. But I think this year it's slightly, last year it was slightly a little bit more and then this year it's slightly a little bit more. So is that a, this, is it money tolling in, in the budget? I think you said something about 79 million is it part of that total of money that um that we have budgeted yes that is part of the budgeted amount of okay. the 78 i think it's the 78.1 and it is part of that okay so um the one other thing you know i'm probably going back you said there was uh, 2.5 million that we got from over jda um, <clears throat> you said that we had 2.5 million so i guess the, the question is how did they go in this budget? Because you just said, you just said something like someone may be in this budget, then you said it was in the 2022 budget. So the current, and this all depends on whether this budget amendment's approved tonight. So this current proposed budget in front of you is going off the assumption that this budget amendment is going to be approved tonight. Mm -hmm. So there, the capital improvement fund is showing a if you look in the revenues under the capital improvement fund, and I'll pull that up. There's going to be a line that says use of prior year funds. So that $2 million is a use of prior year funds because the capital funds are multi-year funds. So you're able to utilize the general fund. You pretty much have that money to use in that fiscal year only, and then once that fiscal year is over, that money is, is no longer available. Capital funds are multi-year funds, so once the, the money is in the capital improvement fund, it can be utilized for multiple years. So that's what this budget's doing. It's showing you a revenue of two million from other financing sources, which under the financing mm -hmm. sources is going to be a line called um, yes, use of prior year funds. Yes, so so I, I guess I guess my question is to Laura is that how are we gonna use that money to 
kind of ease some of the tax burdens on the citizens of Moon County from the taxes. I mean, I thought that one of the main reasons, and somebody helped me, maybe I was listening to the wrong information, that this that money was going to be used to to make sure that the taxes weren't as much as they would have been had we not received that, those money. And what type of reduction in taxes are the citizens of Moon County going to have? Well, by utilizing the funding in the capital improvements fund, then we'll be able to reduce the budget by that same amount because these are projects that we need to do. Um, so we won't have to have as much tax dollars to support the general fund. Uh, we'll have 2.6 million less general fund tax dollars to support that. So, um, so that's how that's the say that's part of the savings there. So, so how do we show the citizens in Lincoln County that that money is reducing their taxes? And how can we show them that? Well, what we'll sh we would be showing them is the the projects that that would be done with with that money and this explanation that simply the explanation that we have here or that Brittany just gave you. I mean, we could certainly add a note to the um, to this uh, to the budget book explaining you know explaining that that's how we reduced the general fund uh, budget requirement. Uh, thank you. Just one last quick question, or well, I guess uh, comment, what do you want to call it? Why couldn't we take the two two point five million and see if if the tax burden from the county said was said eight million, we subtract that two point five from the eight million deduction from the taxes? I mean, it seemed to be complicated, and I don't see where it should. I think it should be simple. Just take. Two and a half, two, two million and a half, subtract it from the tax burden of the citizens in the county, and there would be a reduction, and you would see it. It is my my math. My math probably is it's the wrong kind of math. Well, I wish it was that easy too, but sometimes you know the accounting boards and the state require us to account for things a certain way, um, but. To kind of circle back to how can we show there's going to be a reduction, the original budget that was brought back in April to the workshops was right at 80 million 79.8. So now you're seeing a budget of 78.1 million. So that right there is an example of how we can show taxpayers that this 2.6 has come in and helped to alleviate some of the tax burden off of them because we have reduced our budget from what it originally was in April. Thank you. Brittany? Give me just a second. Let me get back over to the page. Um, Commissioner Sanders. Lord, we um, you and I discussed about a communication fund for the commissioners. Um, just explain what Lord and our conversation was. Um, there is nothing in place for the commissioners to reach out to their constituents. We either come out of pocket, uh, we pay for those services ourselves as part-time employees. Um, as I mentioned to you, that other counties have funding in place for their commissioners to reach their constituents. Have you put something in place for each commissioner that can at least once or twice a year send out a notification because we're not allowed to use the county uh, Facebook page? So is there something in place for commissioners to be able to communicate to their constituents? I have not, but I wanted to hear from the commissioners or what you thought might be an appropriate amount. I mean, it's now's the time to discuss it if you needed whatever amount you needed and then we could make an adjustment in the BOC budget to cover what that amount might be I think we would be able to do that. Did I need to explain it to anybody or you kind of understood what I was missing? Let me explain again. Okay. Lloyd and I had a discussion. I was telling him that in other counties, of course, other counties are larger. They have chief staffs that actually do certain things for them to be able to reach the constituents. 
Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm the most technical one, I don't know. But there is no fund put in place or anything put in place for the commissioner to be able to reach their constituents to send out notifications. Everyone in the county is not on Facebook. Everyone is not technologically savvy. So there has to be a way to reach them. I know we have a Facebook page, but I was told that commissioners not allowed to post their events or anything on that. So in regards to that, that puts it on the commissioner's pocket to be able to reach their constituents. So I was asking Lord, is there something, can be something in place? Um, he did ask me an amount, I said maybe about uh, 3,000 or 2,000 per commissioner to be able to reach their constituents a year and to be able to send out a notification. And it, it's just a figure thrown out there, it could be less than that, I was, we just were throwing things out. But just something to do that because we are growing as a county. We're not that county where it was 90,000 or 80,000 people. Technology has changed over the years and it has to be some way to reach those people who are on technology and those who are not on technology. Let me say, hey, I agree with it. Um, I think the uh, $3,000 per commissioner is a, a good amount. In, in lieu of, of the money that we're already spending on stuff that we shouldn't be spending it on. So. And to keep this brief, if you want to know, just catch me after the meeting. I, I'll probably be here for it. No one else want to make comment? No one else. Uh, Commissioner Calvin. Okay, I'm not. Um, what do you call it? Technologically savvy. Okay. Um, a lot of things that I put into the campaign and, and everything else. It just, it just comes out of my own money because it's, it's an opportunity to serve. And I just hate to um, throw that out for taxpayers to pay my way to communicate with them. It, believe me, they find me. <laughs> and they'll call me if they have a question. So um, um, I, I'm not sure I really be keen on that. I, I didn't really have to think that through. And I'm, like I said, I'm not technologically savvy. So, uh, I don't use Facebook. I, I just, uh, it's just not me. So y'all can do what you want to do. I'm just not. Well, well hey, I mean, y'all do what you want to do, but I'm just, I'm not for that. I just would probably vote against that. Thank you. Let me correct that. This has nothing to do with a campaign. This is during our term. Um, a lot of my constituents reach out to me and say, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't get the information. This is for those who are not on technology to be able to receive the information. So I get those calls. If you want me to send those over to you, I get them all the time. They say, I didn't know about that. I didn't know what was going on. So it's just a way to reach them because the county doesn't send them anything. So I, I don't know. I guess it's up to us. I'm just believing, communicating to you the citizens. This is not new. It's done in every ca other counties outside of us. They do it in Rockdale. They do it in DeKalb. So it's not something new. And we just have to be open for change. We're growing. We have to go into the 21st century. We're still using communication that's antiquated. We have to grow. Uh, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am <laughs> utilize technology a lot. So um, I, I do see where that could be an issue. Um, Lloyd, I don't know if it's a possibility where, because I basically utilize my own funds to do that. Um, even when I have Zoom meetings, I use my own, I pay for my own account every single month. Um, maybe is there a way that um, we can look at these other counties that are doing that to kind of see how they're doing it um, and research that and to see like what funding source they utilize to do that to see if we're able to mirror it to an extent. 
So maybe if we can do just some additional research to find out how other counties are implementing that for their commissioners, if that's something that we can incorporate. I would guess they're probably using the general fund to provide a source of funding for it. So I don't know that, I mean, I don't think that would be an issue for us. I think really where we kind of are with it would be, one, the question is whether or not the board members would like to have that resource. And then two, at what amount would you, do you think would be appropriate for y'all? So, um, and, and I, I think we would be able to fund that. I mean, if we're looking at uh, $2,000 or so, uh, two to $3,000, um, I feel certain that we could make some adjustments in order to, to provide that. Um, but again, it's, it's a, the question would be, you know, whether or not you want to use that or need that resource. Um, Commissioner Callan may not need that resource, so we wouldn't need the budget for him. Um, but the, and likewise, maybe some of the other commissioners may not need that resource, so it, it, we wouldn't necessarily have to make it available to them or budget for them unless that they come across something. So, um, and really, all I would need at this point would be uh, some kind of a consensus on whether, on whether to move ahead with trying to fund that and then at, at what level. So. I was going to say, too, I, I do have some constituents that uh, have expressed to me that because they're not on social media, uh, there sometimes are some things that they don't get. Uh, so I have heard that as well. Um, and so I've, I've basically trying to here recently just trying to figure out how I can personally go about making them aware um, of doing that so that they can get the information. Um, I know one of the ways that I have started um, trying to close that communication gap is really being in communication with my homeowners associations um, on a continual basis and allowing them to uh, distribute information so I'll distribute it to them and then they'll distribute that information out to their homeowners but of course everybody doesn't live in a homeowners association so for those that don't live in a homeowners association I've been trying to figure out how do we reach uh, them as well um, one citizen suggested maybe putting up signs around the county uh, when certain things come up, I know that's an expense, so I would have to look at you know my personal budget to say, is that something that I can basically afford for myself to be able to put signs around when certain things are going on for those that aren't or don't utilize social media or don't check their <clears throat> emails often. So I don't know if I per se would have a figure tonight um, but I think maybe that's something that we can further discuss to kind of see how we can go about that and that it's not going to be, it's something that we can put in our current budget and it's not going to allow us to uh, increase um, the expenses on our citizens just to do that. So I would want to find a way where we can do it without um, throwing that cost at the citizens to do. I, I think what we would do would be to take a look at those line items in the BOC budget to see if we could pull a little bit from the various line items um, and then maybe make up whatever difference there might be with to pull a little bit out of the contingency to make up that difference. Um, so we do have some options at this point. Depends on how large it yeah, as we are uh, past 7 o'clock, and Lord, you want to kind of wind us down so we can move into our regular scheduled meeting, please? Well, I think we've got, I know we didn't get all the way through this on the expenses, but um, the, the budget uh, is available. I'm going to have Brittany go to the... Um, uh, so you can see where it is in the, um, go, go back to the website. So 
this is available for you to get to go to the transparency page. Yeah, it may take a minute for it to come up with what we need. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then drop down there, you'll see 22 budget book. Click on that, and it'll take you to the uh, to the budget book, and you can go work your way through that. Um, and um, uh, get all you know, dive in as deep as you'd like on that. Um, and I think you'll find it pretty easy to read um, and easy to to get any information uh, that you need. Uh, and the next um, budget meeting that we have is next Tuesday at, at 6. Um, that will be our first, first public hearing, so the public will have an opportunity to comment on the budget. Uh, the second budget meeting will be the following week, uh, and that will be uh, on the uh, 15th. And um, that will be also at 6 o'clock, I believe, correct? 6 o'clock. Uh, once a budget is adopted, um, we'll have the information. Uh, then our next uh, step in the process is to adopt a millage rate. Um, and that will most likely be in, uh, hopefully they'll have everything completed in July so we can adopt the millage rate. We'd like to be able to adopt the budget uh, by uh, June, obviously by June 30. So thank you. Thank you. Can I see the motion that we adjourn? Yes. Motion by Commissioner Edwards, second by Commissioner uh, Mason. All in favor? Thank you. Stand adjourned.